Hey, Dale, did I tell you that I was kidnapped by a mad scientist last weekend who experimented on me, replacing my limbs with animal ones? If I ever see him again, man, I tell you, I'm going to tear him apart with my bare hands. Ha <laughs> ha. Bare hands. B-E-A-R. I get it. It's stupid. And it's not exactly true either. I figured. Anyway, did I tell you that I picked up a hitchhiker last night? He asked, how do you know I'm not a serial killer? And I replied, the chances of two serial killers in one car is astronomical. <laughs> did he laugh? He did not. This, my friends, is the Swish Edition. From their secret underground studio, this is the Swish Edition. We got a mouthful for you guys. Dale and Scott are in the studio on the mics, and, and, and they fired up the antenna. It has to come whether you like it or not. And if you're willing to show it, they'll take a picture of it. I actually think I might throw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else in between, here are your new best friends. They're your hosts. It's very exciting for me because this is the best show ever made. Dale and Scott. We're back. Yay. We were gone last week. We've been gone this week. <laughs> we probably should just be gone for the rest of the <laughs> rest of the year, right? Mm-hmm. Only like two weeks left. Right. I uh, eleven days until Christmas. In case you guys are not counting. So ten days till Christmas Eve. Yeah. I don't want, you're not excited? Just ready for it to get over with. I'm so excited. I got my menu planned out. I got everything going. I started decorating for Christmas this weekend. Mm-hmm. This past weekend when we got back from Florida, I put up the tree. And, and when Dale asked me if I was going to put up the Christmas tree myself, I said, no, I'm going to put it in the family room. That's so stupid. Where do you get this shit from? <laughs> 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 anyway, the house is all decked out for Christmas. We're almost ready for our our family. They're all coming in droves at different points. We just got back from Key West. That's why we didn't have a show last week. That's where we should still be. It's one of our happy places. Yeah. Honestly, Dale, I love it there so. It's so much. So fun. much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like we did last May. If you guys are longtime listeners of the show, you know we went in May, fell in love. Rented a little house with a private pool. Well, this one time we rented another house with a private pool, but this one was even better than the other it one. It was a little better. It was more private and it was a lot closer to the places that we liked. And it had a heated pool. Yeah. I mean, the days were in the low 80s, nights were in the high 70s, but it's always nice to have a heated pool. Yeah. Because it, it wasn't keeps that water that really warm. comfortable. No. But you would get in and you wouldn't be like freezing. No. Right. Because it still had a little bit of chill in it, but it wasn't as cold as it would have been. And despite the fact that right outside the door, I mean, we could walk to everything. We're only uh, two blocks from Duval Street. We could walk to literally all of our favorite places. We spent most of the time in that backyard because it was just what we wanted to do. Well, it cost a fortune, so you want to be able to enjoy (laughs) it. That's (laughs) right. Anyway, so we flew down on American Airlines. And I just wanted to say we we flew from Philly um, because that's our... it's really the easiest airport to get to that where we can fly everywhere nonstop. It's a pain in the ass because it's two hours away. But we got on board. And <laughs> this doesn't work for everybody listening to the show, but it, it might work for gay guys. Gay guys know how this works. Right. You get on the flight and you see that the lead flight attendant up front in first class is a gay guy about your age. And you're like, ding, ding, ding. I won the lottery. <laughs> It worked out, y'all. We were in row one, and this guy, basically, can I say, is it true? He got us wasted. We were, I mean, I don't remember getting off the airplane. We don't remember getting off the plane, which is bad. But we didn't rent a car, so don't worry. We no. we took a lift. But yeah, it worked out really well. And he actually knew my dad. That's he right. used to fly with my dad, so, because my dad used to be a pilot. U.S. Airways, and he was U.S. Airways before it became American. So that was cool. That worked out well. And he I was sp- in Philly, right? Yeah, he he's based in Philly. Both my dad was, and yes. the, and the flight attendant. Um, so I spent a good part of the flight 
in the in the galley <laughs> chatting with the flight attendants. Uh, I know. Fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Anyway, we also went back to uh, one of our favorite bars on Duval Street called the Bourbon Street Pub, y'all. Oh, my God. You don't have to be gay to go there. The place you is dangerous. Absolutely don't need to be gay. Well, it was dangerous because you kept buying shots for everyone at the bar. <laughs> Tequila shots. Thank you very much. Mm. We went two nights in a row to see Bria and Sara, who is a, a drummer and a singer. She's so great. Yeah. We, saw her, we met her back in May, and she was there again, and we're just thrilled. She was only there two of the nights that we were there, but she's just a lot of. I mean, she's not the most fantastic. Don't get, don't go there and expect like this. I don't know Beyonce thing. She's just well, singing. She's singing in a bar in Key West. I, I mean, love it. Yeah, it's great. But she's she's talented. She's friendly. She takes requests. That's the, that's the fun part, I think. And you know, she's singing live. You got to appreciate someone who sings right. live, right? And plays the drums while she's doing it. So we had fun doing that. We went back to Ram's Head. Which is one of our favorite bar restaurants down there. They're based, I think they started up here at like Annapolis, Maryland. Annapolis. Annapolis in, right. no, well, yeah, Annapolis. Either Annapolis or Baltimore came first. I can't remember. Right. But they have um, maybe Baltimore because that's where Rams had live. It's Baltimore, is. Yeah. they went to Annapolis and they have this one in, in Key, Key West. West. And we got to know the waiter, the, the bartenders there and had a good time. So. Went to the Hard Rock Cafe because Melissa thought we should. <laughs> All right. I agree it's cute because it's in an old mansion, but yeah. it's still a friggin' Hard Rock Cafe with Hard Rock Cafe food, which you, is you nothing never, to write home about. You never went inside, did you? To get it? I went inside to use it. Yeah, I peeked room. in. I peeked in because she wanted, she thought, cool place. it's very cool. It's very cool. But again, it's a chain and there's so many great restaurants and bars in Key West. You don't need to be going to the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> I know Melissa loves it to death, but and she's got pins from like every cafe all over the world. That's a big thing. It's a big thing. There are big devotees pin. to the Hard Rock Cafe. Yeah. Uh, we we also tried something new. We went to a Thai restaurant, and Dale actually loved it so much he bought a T shirt. Yeah, because of the name, the Miso Happy. Miso Happy. It's Suchi and Thai. M I S O like miso, miso soup, miso happy, Suchi and uh, Thai. Why do you have to pick out the misspellings in our script? It's funny. It's supposed to say sushi. sushi. <laughs> it's it's suchy. I don't know how to spell sushi. <laughs> anyway. You just replaced that C with an S. Yeah. All right. Well. But it was great. It was great. We had a good time. They and, burned me. And also, we, we went Monday to Friday. So we were there four nights. But it perfect. Felt, it, it's the perfect amount of time. No weekends because you don't get the craziness. But then we get well. Then we land in Philly at like seven something at night on a Friday, and I have to drive all the way home two yeah. hours. So we got home like after nine. It was it sucked, and it was raining and dark. Oh, and I hate driving in the rain and the dark. Yeah, I really hate it. <laughs> and I had to drive because I didn't drink on the way home, on the plane. Someone had to not. Because we had to drive. Could have had one or two. Oh, I did before I got on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're home. I uh, wanted to point out, if you guys don't know, this Friday, December 17th, is National Ugly Christmas Sweater Day. We got our new ones. I have one. It needs to go to the dry cleaner because it came smelling icky. It looks good, but it smells icky. So yeah. I'm going to get it clean. I'm probably not going to wear it this Friday, but I will. Oh, i got to wear it Saturday. Oh, I was going to save it for Christmas Eve. I'm wearing it twice. You can't wear it twice. Oh, I can Oh, okay. You can do whatever you want. It's free country. <laughs> On our flight back and forth to uh, from to and from Key West, we did not see a woman breastfeeding a cat. No, we did not. That would be weird. But it actually happened. A woman on a Delta Airlines flight reportedly began breastfeeding her cat during a flight and refused to stop when confronted by the crew. This was on a flight between Syracuse, New York and Atlanta, Georgia. And there's a video that's going uh, viral from the, I guess they call it the aircraft communications addressing system. This is a system that the pilots can use, basically like texting, yeah, to ground control. And someone took a picture of the report <laughs> where the pilot said, requesting red coat meet our flight. There's a passenger in seat 13A breastfeeding a cat and will not put the cat back in its carrier. Oh my God. I mean, how fucking fucked up do you have to be? Not only that, this was a hairless cat, and it was wrapped in a blanket like a baby. 
How fucked up. And apparently the cat went berserko when she finally put the cat back in the carrier. Did not want to go in there. She wanted the breast milk. (laughs) (laughs) This is not right. Delta says they're having a problem with passengers interpreting their emotional support animals in the cabin rule because they've some people have tried to bring on comfort turkeys, gilding possums, snakes, spiders, and more over the years. You just stop doing it. You just, just stop. stop. You just stop doing it. If you need a dog or a cat or a fucking turkey to soothe yourself on the airplane, Maybe you just need to stay the fuck home. I mean, have How they about tr- that? Have they tried alcohol. Yeah, it, it works for you. Yeah, it's great. Seriously, dude, if you're that fucked up in the head, no offense to people that are fucked up in the head, but I'm just, actually surprised they do it anyway. What about people with allergies? Like emotional these? support animals. Give me a fucking break. Just stay home or I mean, take a pill. We know someone who has an allergy to dog dander right what if you were in the next seat you sat next to him and he's like i cannot fly in on this you're going to kill me it's just like southwest having peanuts on board it just seems like a bad idea just give people pretzels man give them nothing bring their own shit no you know how i feel about that (laughs) people bringing hot food on the airplane i saw that i remember that guy up with that i bought it in a little plastic bag i was you could tell it was like a cheeseburger or something that was in there there should be a rule man (laughs) there should be a rule it it must be either cold or room temperature no fucking hot food can be brought onto the airplane that's disgusting that's like that's as bad as taking off your shoes on the airplane and having your bare feet out i did tell you it feels good Take your shoes off. Sure. So, but I don't want to see your feet. Oh, no. no I fl- certainly wouldn't walk around. No flip-flops on the airplane either. Don't fly with flip-flops. What if there's an accident? <laughs> you're going to you're gonna need to run. You can't run in flip-flops. Mm-mm. Stupid. People are stupid. Most people are stupid. Yeah. Not Good Morning America anchor Michael Strahan. He's I, the- You know, I had no pre-knowledge of this, and I just saw it today on the news, and I was like, and I had to read... Is that the Michael Strahan that I that yeah. I see on TV? The one with the lisp and the the, the gap and the gap in his teeth. He yeah. uh, went to space on Blue Origin this past Saturday. Wow! He went along with Alan Shepard's daughter. He, Alan Shepard was the first American in space. She went up. There were four par- uh, paying guests along with Alan Shepard's daughter and Michael Strahan, including a pansexual named Cameron Bass. Uh, which was he was capping off pansexual pride week. Uh, he's also a noted furry. Wow. And he went with his father, also a first in space, first father and son in space. Were they paying? They, pa- they paid. <laughs> yeah. Well, his father did. I don't know how much uh, pansexual furries make. Anyway, mm. I had to look up what a pansexual was because I wasn't absolutely sure. Yeah. It means not limited in sexual choice with regard to biological sex, gender, or gender identity, which I guess means that pansexuals will have sex with any one, maybe even a comfort turkey. I don't know. I mean, he is a furry. I don't think pansexuals do bestiality. All right. I was, I was, that was a joke. That was the joke <laughs> part of my But you didn't laugh at the definition. Answer. How do I know? But seriously, are are these people really astronauts? It's a 10 minute flight. They're not really going it. And they go into space for like a minute or two and then they come right back down. 60 miles up though. That's, That's a long really, ways, man. Really high. It's really amazing that I mean, they go up to 60 miles and back in 10 minutes. I guess the word astronaut mm-hmm. is like a really really deserving title. I mean, sure. these are people who worked hard. Who have had the education. You're not an astronaut if you just fly on. They go to the ISS and they actually do things. Exactly. And do science. And these guys are just riding in a rocket. For 10 minutes. You're not an astronaut. But you did go into space. Sure. Sure. You were a a passenger. Not an astronaut. Right. You were a space passenger. Exactly. But man. Not an astronaut. Lots of firsts this week. I mean, I think that Michael Strahan might be... The first Good Morning America anchor to go into space. (laughs) (laughs) Next up is Robin Roberts. Oh, my goodness. I think Kathy Lee up there. Well, Gail. Odo and with some wine. Gail over at CBS says she's not doing it. She has no interest. I have no interest in going. I have none either. I'm staying on this planet. (laughs) (laughs) I like this planet. 
Oh, Anyways, man. thinking about Christmas movies because we've already watched a couple from my list already this year. Yeah, I was wondering what your favorite ones were. I can I can I tell you my top fifteen? <laughs> that is ridiculous, but sure. I only have fifteen. So number one of all time, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which we watched the other day. Home Alone, which we watched the other day. <laughs> uh, a Christmas Story. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, which Dale watched on the airplane. Mm -hmm. Die Hard. A Nightmare Before Christmas, which Dale has yet to see. White Christmas. I have not seen A Nightmare Before Christmas. You haven't seen it? No, you haven't seen it. I have seen it. The cartoon. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh, I thought you said you'd never seen it. I've I've watched the first 10 minutes and this is a, didn't like it. That doesn't mean, oh, it's not stupid. It's very entertaining and very well done. (laughs) (laughs) The 1954 White Christmas, love it. Scrooge from 1988, love actually. The Ref, Elf, A Bad Mom's Christmas, which Dale and I just watched night before last. That, that is just so funny. So Chris, freaking funny. Every it's time so freaking it. funny. I could watch it again tonight. I mean, the best part is stealing the Christmas tree from the Lady Foot Locker. The, a classic. It's the best. It's classic. I love Kenny G. Get out of my, get the fuck out of my house, Kenny G. <laughs> Am I still getting paid? <laughs> oh, man. Christmas with the Cranks. Uh, the Christmas Chronicles, which is the new-ish movie that Netflix put together. And we have not seen the second one. Haven't seen the second one. And then Office Christmas Party, which, oh, you know, Jennifer Aniston as a villain. Gotta love her. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Aniston, uh, speaking of her, was just nominated for a Golden Globe for the morning show. Morning show? Golden Globe nominations just came out last night. Nice. I'm not going to go through them all. You no, guys can look it up don't. yourself. But lots of succession, lots of morning show. La Hacks, both the lead nice. women from Hacks were nominated along nice. with the show. Uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short. Martin Short, both nominated for Only Murders in the Building. Selena Gomez, nothing. nothing. That's she, a shame. Anyway. She's actually... I like her, and I've seen her act. I don't think she's her character's just not that interesting in Only Murders and kind of monotone and um, yeah, she's just kind of. I mean, I like her there. I like her, she's and I'm glad great. she's there, and she's a nice foil to the two of them. But well, she's no. done great in other stuff, but in this, you know, her character in this is just like it, would, she doesn't even need to be there. I wouldn't give her an award for it. <laughs> Did you guys know that actor William Hickey, who played Uncle Lewis in Christmas Vacation, is also the voice of the evil scientist in The Nightmare Before Christmas? <gasps> <laughs> He's dead now. Oh. But yeah, he did both movies. So that's a little trivia for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I need to talk about this because it makes me so mad. Yeah. And I'm going to actually be doing a review of And Just Like That on this Friday's Binge Bum podcast Mm -hmm. because I've watched the, by then I'll have watched the first three episodes. Right. But I'm very, very fucking pissed off at, excuse me, the likes of Variety Magazine, Entertainment Weekly, Vanity Fair, and the others who really jumped the gun and posted the huge shocker and twist from episode one mere hours after the first two episodes dropped this past Thursday. I just don't understand. I know we've talked about this on the show before. Why do people feel like everyone has watched it already at 10 a.m. on the day it comes out? Right. Most people don't. And also the other thing is that if you are going to post about this, because these people get way early access to this sort of stuff, is don't put the goddamn spoiler in the headline. Yes, or allude to it. That. Or just say spoilers ahead or yeah. something. Or one of them said major cast death from original cast member. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? How dare you? Most people at 10 a.m. on Thursday, they were at work. Right. They haven't had a chance to watch the fucking show yet. Right. Maybe it's you not should write to them. Fair. I, I have. I have. Well, online in comments. You think I should write them a letter? No, you should actually go and... Send it to the thing and say, look, if you insist on talking about spoilers, just please don't put them in the headline. Yeah. It's I show up on my Facebook feed and I read it and I was like, well, fuck. Right. Oh, fuck is exactly what I said. So, you know, we're on vacation 
I had no intention of dialing up HBO on my phone. No, nobody wants to do that. And watching this on vacation. We didn't watch TV at all on this trip. Not at all. This is, this was, so I was looking forward to watching when we got home and you, we got home on Friday night late. I was wired. I couldn't sleep. So I watched it on Friday night late. And then, of course, I saw what happened. Right. I refuse to talk about it. I won't tell you guys because it hasn't even been a week yet. Right. So I'm not going to talk about what the big spoiler is. I think after a week, I think it should be fine that you should talk about the first episode. I think I think maybe. But not mere hours after the episode's release. No, it's not fair. It's just, it's shitty. And it makes me want to unfollow Variety, Entertainment, Wiggly, Vanity Fair, all these things, Deadline. But those are my bread and butter for finding things to talk about on our fucking shows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not a huge fan of Entertainment Weekly, Variety, I can give or take. Vanity Fair, I do like their long reads sometimes. Sure. They're kind of fun. But just stop with the spoilers. You don't need to be the first person to comment on a show. Right. Just stop. Give people a chance to watch it. That's what I want to say. Maybe you should, we, maybe you should start a change.org. Really? No spoilers during the first week. <laughs> You're not allowed to talk about it until a week after it premieres. Right. Just stop. It was also on the news this morning. I know it, it was, was on the news but it this been, morning. It's been over a week. No, it hasn't. Since the first episode? A Thursday. Today's Tuesday. It's only been four days. Oh. Give me a break. You've had time to watch it by then. That, but not everyone has a... Not everyone can watch everything that comes out immediately when it comes out. So when is the appropriate time to be able to talk about it in full openness? I thought we just said a week, god damn it. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Should I replay the tape? No, no please don't. <laughs> Kyle Richards has closed a deal to return for Halloween Ends, the third in this little... Se- uh, I don't know what they call it. It's the final one, right? Well, it's not going to be the final one. It's the, it's called Halloween Ends, and they supposedly it's going to be the final one. But you know it's going to come back again. Mm. Everything comes back. It's getting tired, just like James Bond. Shut your fucking... I, I can't with you today. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, it's the same shit. It's just a different movie. Well, the, the, then the same next... same shit. Then you might say the thing about the next story. <laughs> Nicolas Cage is set to play Dracula in it's Universal's... So stupid to me. In Universal's new Renfield movie. I mean, maybe maybe it's perfect casting, but I'm looking at <laughs> Nicolas Cage and I just don't see Dracula. Right, well, yeah, I think he can pull it off. But look who's playing Renfield. Nicholas Holt. You know you like him. No, I think he's great. He's done yeah. a lot of things. So they're turning the story upside down. This is going to focus on Dracula's sidekick, Renfeld, Mm. instead of Dracula. So Nicolas Cage is actually playing the secondary character in this. Uh I think this is great. I mean, Dracula has been done a million times. Right. But I'm looking forward to it. I like I like monster movies and Universal, you know, keeps churning out the monster movies. They they own them all. They can do whatever they want with them. (laughs) So according to the Rover app and Dale and I used Rover. To find our wonderful pet sitter in yeah. Las Vegas, Susan. Rover's a great app. Great app. Um, you can hear our dogs in the background. <laughs> According to the Rover app, the most popular dog names for 2021 have been announced. Uh-oh. So the most popular, 10 most popular female dog names are starting at the top. With number one is Bella, Luna, Lucy, Daisy, Zoe, Lily, Lola, Bailey, Stella, and Molly. <laughs> the fuck names their dog Stella. Who names a female dog Bailey. I don't. I don't know. But we do know a Zoe. She's coming here to stay with us this yeah, week. She's coming tomorrow. She's coming tomorrow. Whether we like it or not. <laughs> the top ten male dog names. I gotta like this list. Is Max, Charlie. We have one of those. Cooper, Buddy, Milo, Bear. Rocky, Duke, Tucker, and Jack. Yeah, when I was a kid, our black lab, his name was Duke. And I used to own a Jack. I think bear is a stupid name for a dog because it's a dog, not a fucking bear. And our neighbor had a chow chow who actually bit me. That's the mark on my knee. Uh huh. His name was Bear. That was a mean dog. Duke. I think you can call a dog Barky. I like Tucker. Tucker's kind of cool. Barky is a good name for a dog. Yeah. Or just dog, like on uh, 
What show was it? Or the oh, Walking Dead. The dog's name is just oh, dog. Just dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. That's got to be coming. That's coming back in January, right? Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> I want to talk about tickets. This is the new ticket section. Ticket. Tickets. People are trying to sell Spider-Man No Way Home opening day tickets for insane prices on eBay. I mean, I'm telling you, there's scores and scores and scores of people trying to sell tickets. Yeah. How and why is this movie so fucking big? I have no idea because I don't remember the first one. It was it was good, but I don't remember all of this. This is the one. It's kind of a meta universe where like all the different guys who are playing Spider-Man are all in here. It's just Tom Holland is back. Plus all Jer- Jerry Maguire. Jer- not Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. And I mean, they're all in here. It's, it's Yeah, it's weird. It's stupid. I won't watch it. Anyway, the number one, the, the most expensive one I saw was $50,000 for two movie tickets in Nashville, but it comes with a NFT. Yeah. Some kind of special NFT collectible. Do you know what that is? Uh, not for prof, not for tender. It's I, one of those. I believe it's non digital art, non fungible token. Yeah. And yeah, it's like a digital art thing that you own. It's weird. It's a digital file that uh, you own. Yeah, there's also... No one else can do anything with it. There's also like this weird digital real estate where people are paying, you know, what you would pay for a regular house. They they actually quote it by the square footage and you can digitally buy it and digitally move in and pick your furniture. It's just stupid. Stupid. Uh... I don't want to, I'm not going to name his name, but the guy who did our new painting that we bought in QS back in May, mm-hmm. is hanging on our wall, he just released his first NFT. It's a big deal. It, it, I just don't get it. I can't hang it on my wall. No, you can't do that. You Stupid. can email it. Anyway, the tickets for, <laughs> I don't understand why people want to spend so much money on opening day tickets to a movie when you could just go a couple of days later. $25,000 for four tickets in Bronx, New York. $21,000 in Plantation, Florida. $17,000 for a couple tickets at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. No, what, no, what, no, I know. What kind of dumbass would pay that much money to go see a movie? <laughs> it's so stupid. I don't know. The you same can, one that breastfeeds a cat, I guess. You can go a week later for $12, <laughs> you stupid fuck. Why do you need to be the first? Oh, you know why they want to be the first one to watch it? Because so the Entertainment Weekly, Weekly and Vanity Fair don't ruin it for don't them. Ruin it, right? Just stay offline. Oh God! Uh, it's too stupid. Mm-mm. The same thing's happening out in Caesars, uh, or out in Vegas. The new Weekends with Adele show, which was announced while we, since we last did our old our show, uh, Adele is going to be doing a residency at Caesars Palace, where Celine Dion used to be. Yeah. Stang is there now, and Reba, and all those, all the Beggies. So it's just starting uh, January, Saturday and Sunday shows, I think, or Friday night and Saturday, whatever. I don't know when the fucking shows are. I mean, I wouldn't go to an Adele concert if she was playing on my back porch. I mean, I don't. Horrible. No, she does nothing for me. Okay. Nothing. You can just say I'm not a fan. I, I just did. You just took a shit on her. I, I, w- <laughs> I wouldn't even bother taking a shit on her. <laughs> She's not worth my shit. Oh, God. <laughs> I might pee on her, though. Anyway, yeah. the uh, Weekends at Odell show has been uh, sold out almost immediately. Record speed. Because bots bought all the fucking tickets, and now right. they're being sold, resold online for right. mind-boggling numbers. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars for these fucking tickets. And in related news, the Olivia Rodrigo, who I had to look up, apparently I know a bunch of her music, but I didn't know her name. Right. Same for me, because yeah. I knew the music, but I didn't know It was kind of like Dua Lipa. I kept <laughs> asking you, who this fucking Dua Lipa? Right. And then you played me a couple songs, and I'm like, oh, I love her. Yeah. Now I know her, and now right. I have all of her music on my phone. So now maybe I need to get Olivia Rodrigo music on my phone. If she walked in the door right now, I'd have no idea who she was, but I don't think I know what she looks like. Almost as soon as her concert tickets went uh, on sale for her new Sour Tour, they were gone. And even her diehard, diehard fans who were even registered fans in the fan club couldn't get tickets because all the bots won. They got all the tickets. Right. And now some of the tickets are going as high as $9,000 each online. 
hefty, hefty profit so that even fans can't afford to go to the yeah. friggin' show. It's it's a shame. And it's a problem it's been a problem it, for a long time. It's an time. epidemic, but I have an easy solution. And I do not understand why the concert sellers refuse to do this. But I think concert tickets should be sold like airline tickets with your friggin' name on the ticket. So if I buy a ticket, it says my name, Scott, on the ticket. It's non-transferable. I have to show, just like when I get on an airplane, I have to show my ID. Show them your ID when you get to the theater. The only way you can get a refund, say you can't go. Your grandma right. dies, right? Or, insurance. Or your dog is sick. No, not insurance. You can sell it back to the ticket seller and they can resell it. But no selling it to your friend and no selling it on eBay. And I mean, it's going to kill the StubHub business, but fuck them. No, you know could, what? They could just get on board and issue the tickets. I mean, oh, sure. They could become a ticket seller like Ticketmaster. Yeah. Fine. But no secondary selling of tickets. No, you can't buy a ticket to the concert in order to resell it. Right. That shouldn't be your business because it's ridiculous. And what about what what happened to the rule of not uh, selling a ticket more than its value? Of the ticket. Why aren't, aren't these people fucking going to jail? That's how I know. What is shouldn't it be illegal? Right. No, but what have we said a million times in this house, in this on the show, in this house? <laughs> if someone's willing to pay for something, that's what it's worth. So if someone's willing to pay nine thousand dollars for two tickets to the Olivia Rodrigo show, I guess that's what it's worth. Right. But if you're not legally allowed to do it, then. But it's happening. Of course. I think it must be legal or StubHub wouldn't exist. Right? I guess. Even Ticketmaster has a reselling option. It's they they're the ones who sold it in the first place. (laughs) It's fucked up. And if you want to sit in the front row or near the front to a concert, a popular concert, you're gonna pay out your ass. This is why we don't go to concerts unless someone is paying giving us free tickets. Like Right. MGM casinos. Yeah. We're not paying for them anyway. Why would we pay? Anyway, I I enjoy watching concerts on my TV just as much as going, so I know I it's fine with me. I'm not gonna pay <laughs> no nine thousand dollars for Olivia <laughs> Rodrigo or Adele. Anyway, so that's all I got. <laughs> There, we got some Vegas rumors. Uh, Dale sent me this one. MGM to develop a brand new mega resort on the South Strip. I am really surprised that this was even an idea that's being floated. Because MGM said they weren't going to build any more resorts. Uh, I know. They're selling Mirage. They sold Bellagio. They're, I mean, they're taking over Cosmo, but they're not buying it. Right. They're taking, they're running a lot of stuff, but they don't necessarily own the buildings anymore. Las Vegas is making huge profits, man. It's it's back. It's hot. It's, it's hotter back. than it was pre-pandemic i was looking at flights for you and i to go because we want to go sometime soon i don't want to say anything more about it because i know that our friends in vegas are listening and i want to talk to them personally before i make an announcement yeah but so we're gonna fly there 950 dollars for coach no thank you 950 dollars for coach that's a lot i mean what the hell is going on? <laughs> and you can't even don't even have the choice to buy alcohol back there. Well, this is January. I think they're going to have alcohol back in January. Are they? That's good. Anyway, there's also another rumor that um, the Oakland A's, if they do end up moving to Vegas, they want to put their ballpark where Tropicana is, rip down Tropicana and build a baseball park there. I could. Tropicana needs to go. It does. It's tired. It's tired. I mean, I always call it the Walmart of the Strip. It's so fucking bright in there. It's, it's very Who wants to be in a white, bright room? It's very unlike the others on the Strip. It is bright in there. I mentioned Melissa earlier in the show. Melissa and her husband, Jeremy, are... Oh, gosh. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say. Their bosses aren't listening to them. Do, you, do your bosses know you're in Vegas, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're not there. Actually, right. you know what? I don't think they are there. Oh. I get better get permission before I... Yeah. Yeah. Take this out. Should I take it out? Fuck. More work for me. A few sad notes. Um, Anne Rice, one of my favorite authors of all time, interview with the vampire and so many other books that she wrote. wrote. She passed away this past weekend, 80 years old. And Michael Nesmith, who I grew up with, man, watching the monkeys. Did you ever watch the monkeys? No. Oh, it's such a great TV show. Such a great group. 
Uh, it's so fun. He was kind of the lead guy. He died this past week at 78. So two of two people that I really admired in the world of entertainment. Yeah. And then one that makes me just fucking pissed off. And if you guys follow me on social media, you know that I am absolutely against, 100% against horse racing. I think it's I a, hate all animal sports. Any sport that involves, or entertainment that involves an animal. Yeah. Give me a fucking break. Anyway, three-year-old Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit collapsed and died after a workout in California this weekend. They run these animals to the death, yeah. basically. Yeah. Had a heart attack and died. What a shame for a three-year-old to die that way. <laughs> Horses should, like the horse down the street that our friends, the landscapers own. Yeah, just kind of hangs that out. That horse hangs out, has a nice big stable, eats grass, gets ridden every now and then. Yeah. Doesn't have to, doesn't Not have to. Forced to run. Doesn't to do have anything. to, f- isn't whipped with a whip and forced to run around a track. Yeah. Fuck you people who like horse racing. And dog racing and and swimming with dolphins and anything like that. And the the you dog shows. Fuck the dog shows. At least they're not at least the dog show the dog shows I can I'll I, I will actually watch some of it on Thanksgiving Day. And they're not hurting the dogs, they're just making No, them, but the dogs are not having fun. I, I can't imagine they're having fun. They're probably not allowed to go outside and play in rough house because no, they're, they're gonna get messed dirty. up. Right. right. Fuck you, people! What show? Do- and then they, <laughs> then the the humans win an award. Right. You're gonna give the humans an award for the dog? It's the dog's award, bitch. You had nothing to do with it. <laughs> you cleaned the eye boogers out of your dog's eyes and right. that's it, and then paraded them out. <laughs> I mean, you've seen Best in Show, right? Yeah, that, one of the best movies ever that, about. That is funny. About that uh, industry. Yeah. Yeah. That's a complete joke. Anyway, that's our show. It's a little sh- a little shorter this week because I uh, actually it was a lot longer, but I took a bunch of stuff out. What? Well, before we came down here. Yeah. You know, you thought you want to do more? No. I, mean, I thought we'd go upstairs and make tacos. Yeah, man. I'm, it's been a long time since we've had it. I know, and we also have to watch Succession because we haven't we were gone, and then so we right, before we get um before we, we get told about it. Oh, I've been purposely not reading the articles. Yeah. I don't want to know what happens until I know. <laughs> but this is it. We've got last Sundays and this past Sunday, so we got two episodes to watch. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the Binge Bum Podcast is back this Friday. If you guys like to know what's going on in the world of streaming video subscription services, we'll have all your news. I. I found lots of news while we we're gone. Yeah. So I've been writing it down for you. Uh-oh. So. I know you actually, yeah, we both try to put things into the little app. Well, that's what it's for. Yeah. And there's lots of news this week. So tune in. That'll be out um, usually around midday on Friday. Or whenever. Or whenever Dale fucking <laughs> feels like it. <laughs> All right. We love y'all. Uh, we'll be back next week for our Christmas episode. Bye. I thought we just said a week, goddammit. What is wrong with you?